Yo, yo. Hello? They told him to stop blocking people on social media, and he said, F*** that. I'll block you. I quit. Is that how it went down? That's how, that's how it went <laughs> down. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say uh, there's a it, it's there's it's a possibility that <laughs> there were disagreements in a boardroom about perhaps let's say the future of uh, Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there was a you know we should we should zig, and then he was like, "Nah, we zagging, bro. We it, committed um, to zagging." And then maybe the there was a little bit of a but. But there's a feedback that really wants it to zig, and he's like, "But I want it to zag." And then there was perhaps a disconnect on that. I could see that being possible, you know. Yeah, I read the statement, and uh, it, uh, I, I don't think Platinum's gonna be doing well in the near future. I think there's also so here's the here's my other like uh, uh, tinfoil is like, do we see? Uh, fucking Camille walking into a Capcom office. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! As a free agent, that... all these years later. <laughs> no, I I see him doing like a little indie studio. I see that too. I see that too. But could you imagine just being like, you know what? I always wanted to do more beautiful Joe and Okami officially. So fuck it. I, Even I though, can't. but and and the thing is, is they're gonna be like, okay, that's fine. Put the collar on, and he'll be no, like, "You." I, <laughs> that's not what it would be like. It would be like, "Who are you?" There, yeah, it's a it's a new group of people. But maybe it's that's, been a long time. But that's the one reason why I think that is like that insane possibility suddenly sounds a little bit more possible is because everyone and everything that like was around back then, uh, mm. especially the people that he probably would have hated are no longer there they're dead so, they all died so as a new company he could walk back in and be like all right time to pick back up <laughs> like every while yeah but my, no, my more, um more than likely like indie 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 thing indie jam. uh my tinfoil hat thing is platinum being like we're going in all in on gas and Camille's like that sounds like shit <sighs> I mean that, and and because they've said they're gonna go all in on gas. They said they're going in on on owning their own uh, IPs as well, right? Like pushing their own stuff. Um, an argument about the future certainly feels like a pot, the the thing that would lead for him and uh, Inaba to go their separate ways on this. I think as well, like as far as we knew, GG was the only thing on the slate, right? That uh, mm -hmm. he was doing the the director um, plus story on, I think. Cause usually yeah, he's he was like, doing like, he supervises a bunch. He was, yeah, like, that's what he's been doing for uh, 20, since 2019, he's been mm -hmm. a supervising director. There hasn't been a ton that's been like, you know, hands on ground up uh, for a while. So mm -hmm. I think uh, perhaps, you know, some of that and, and, um, you know, and maybe even just a, like, the games I want to make are not compatible with the direction you want to go yeah. type of type of vibe. I mean, here comes the new fun headcanon in which he's supervising somebody and he goes, you know what you should fucking do, right? You should put a fucking Space Harrier level on this. <laughs> and they were like, would you shut the fuck up? And he's like, I can't take this fucking disrespect Sir every time. I have an idea. Someone tells me to shut up. Sir, this is Mario <laughs> Tennis. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Yeah. You should everyone should wear glasses. You know what you should do. Peach and Daisy. And... Favorite image of him as supervising director is just like the same six ideas just on uh, and on every single situation like <sighs> What if uh what if you use the analog stick to make a line and then you 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 drew it around them? You fuck, wouldn't that be fucking crazy? That son of a bitch <laughs> has no range, but you know what? Neither do we. So, hey, I think... Like, uh, somebody in the chat just pointed out, like, yeah, hey, Yoko Taro, what do you think the big gimmick should be for the game? I think when the game ends, it should keep going. It should keep going, yeah. And then it'll delete your save, your save file. file? Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, 
God. It's like the, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, man, just, you know, uh, like may, I feel like deep down he has a game design that involves him just fighting Twitter. Like, I mm -hmm. feel like he has a full fleshed out world of, of him just fighting comments as a, as a game design that he wants to see made somewhere. You know, it's it's a bummer because you say that, and I'm thinking of a Project GG it was supposed to be like basically Ultraman, right? That was mm -hmm. that was the, the idea. And I had this idea that we've seen a little bit in other games that I thought that Kamiya would be perfect for, which is Ultraman or GG, whatever the fuck, save, Platinum Man saved the city. But then Platinum Man has to, like, handle the social media blowback of, like, he stepped on that diner that people liked oh, man. during the fight. And it's just constant, constant social media garbage. But I saved the city! Yeah, but... Uh. You know, it would be uh, like you'd 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 build up your your reputation. People would ret you could retweet whenever someone says something nice, right? Uh, yeah. Obviously, the most powerful move in the game is the ultimate defense block, right? And and that would become more and more of a thing that levels up as you go. And uh, you've got one uh, uh, model that you follow at all times, <laughs> and you just. <laughs> And you gotta, you know, just just uh, see what's going on there every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I could I could see it. I could see it. There's there's a whole game to be made. But really, I think when you look back on the the so the, obviously the story we're talking about is Camille's leaving Platinum was announced like an hour or two ago, um, and uh, you know at the end of the day, um, you look back on that that. That career so far, he's he's not retiring. He's gonna keep making games. He said, mm -hmm. "Not batting a thousand, no, but he's batting over five hundred. Yes, and that's pretty fucking good. It's uh, he's got the same thing going on that Yoko Taro does, in which uh, I get the very strong impression that he's the kind of creator that needs a uh, a devil on his shoulder to say." the devil producer essentially to be like fucking stop it no no don't like the collar like it, uh, the collar I always, the, the chains yeah i always think about suda 51 and i think about no more heroes 2 and how no more heroes 2 is incredible and how my favorite boss fight in that game is against margaret moonlight mm. has the fantastic song and all that but like before that is the the insanely long parking lot fight in the supermarket Mm. that's like 15 minutes of just fighting guys endlessly and i remember reading an interview with suda and it's like oh yeah that fight's so long so that you really feel the emotions of like the the endless drudgery of daily life and I'm like the grind and like yeah, yeah, yeah. don't make it bad on purpose yeah. suda well that, You're that fucking crazy the, the whole talk about the the side jobs in the first game and stuff the boringness <laughs> that you want to get back to the exciting hero life or, 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 you know, fight assassin life and stuff is <laughs> deliberately boring. And it's like, yeah, no, we can, we can find other ways to do this. You know, um, you're crazy. I want to yeah. say Sh Shenmue was built entirely on that philosophy. <laughs> um, you know, the <sighs> excitement of, of, of working a day job is, uh, yeah. You know, you're going to feel more immersed with the character when you realize how depressing and shitty his days are. You know? I feel like the only, the only like, video game auteur or whatever that you would call them that isn't like that is Kojima. And it's, like, the only thing that comes down on high is, like, the platform holder being, like, you can't do that. See, Kojima does it too, though. But the thing is, is that Kojima was like, you're going to be a fucking teamster. And that's what you're going to do here. And that is a, to some people, that is making it shitty on purpose. But mm -hmm. if you happen to have that little thing that's like, that's a satisfying thing to deliver to that place. And that, and if you happen to enjoy that, it's, it's actually quite fulfilling. I you know? The, about Death Stranding a lot. Building out the road and then traveling to it and getting people their packages is a unique way to have fun. And it's not for everybody. And it's not for the average person looking to play the, the latest Kojima, like, fucking bomb smash hit. But I feel like Death Stranding is AAA commitment. the most real video game that's ever existed. 
because I feel like it's the only video game ever made in which the people making it didn't have to think about money even once. Like, hey, what do you want to make? This stupid bullshit. And Sony just went, yeah, okay, as long as your name is on it. And the we'll let you do anything. And like, the there is no mass market consideration in Death Stranding at all. And the irony is that for what the game ended up being, <laughs> it could have been a fucking Kickstarter budget game. Oh, yeah. It did not have to be that much, uh, <sighs> that quadruple A to execute. You know, like the the a ton of the uh, the the model quality, the actors they hired. Did you really need a bunch of really high end talented actors? Did you need to scan in Del Toro? You know, really gourd side missions with full lore details. Like all you really needed was here's how the enemies work, and here's the creepiness of the system. Whenever it Bennett starts raining, Fawdy could have made that game. Absolutely, <laughs> it had it. It really didn't. The entire BB go in your shower fucking system, damn, like, like baby bunkering. Steps. Baby it's steps wild. is the Kickstarter looking mm -hmm. version of what Death Stranding could have been. Mm -hmm. It could have been an isometric view with like fucking pixel art SimCity. Even like it, re it could have been so stripped down for what it was in the end, you know. But he loves Hollywood. He loves it. He needs it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah. So you know, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, again, I feel I feel like even in this like uh, uh, platinum situation where like we he we left Capcom to do whatever we want, and now platinum has kind of become something else. And uh, he's probably thinking, well, now I need to leave in order to do what I want. You know. Yeah. But I think it's... let's look let's look to see because they made their statement right and uh, mm -hmm. no not much information besides you know hey thanks for all the time the the good times and um, it's something unpredictable but in the end it's right hope you had the time of your life mm -hmm. um, let's see what they announce you know the timing of this too was right at Tokyo Game Show uh, so I don't think that we've heard anything platinum -related. I feel like platinum's tagline is is possibly becoming incredibly unfortunate which is platinum never loses its luster it's it's well i think what it is is it's starting to look like other companies that hit and miss and hit and miss pretty frequently um i i want to say most of the hits were of course way back when and uh yeah the, the the ability to not make a ton of cash will force desperate decisions out. I, and some of those are going to be like, let's lean into games as a service, which obviously I want to say the same people working there would have balked at having that conversation with themselves in the past, you know? But when the I bills feel... are, when the lights are fucking flickering, uh, you know, they start looking at shit like that like it's a good idea. I feel like Platinum had the chance to really show everybody that they that, that Capcom that they they knew what the fuck they were doing because like to those of you who are unaware the history of 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 Platinum is it it's born primarily out of a studio called Clover at Capcom which was like hey do you guys want to make your own games with with you know whatever you want to do great just make sure they make money and then they made like the worst selling best games of all time and then Capcom's like, how about you make some games that make some money? And they went, fuck you, we'll quit. We'll make our own studio and our games will make money. And then they proceeded to make like 40 games that make no money. They made seeds as, a, <laughs> as a, their first step away. And, then and it's like, mm -hmm. man, whoever, whatever Capcom people were responsible for the argument that caused everyone at platinum to quit like yeah they were right they should make games that make money you should make games that make money you should but you should also make wonderful 101 and bayonetta because those are great <laughs> and i'm happy they exist i recently saw a yeah. really funny comment which was a digging back to re like a really old conversation of ours uh, about platinum in which you were describing like a mechanic uh from wonderful 101 and like you were using it as an example to compare. 
and apparently I stopped you and went woolly even amongst the audience of this podcast no one no has one played what you're talking about. I, right like it is it is like the worst selling good game i have ever played in my life it mm. defies belief yeah um they and it, it does represent the ultimate like fucking uh, problem that is you know quality without mass appeal versus uh uh going all the way in and and uh, uh, turning off the the not turning off the quality but diluting it right something we're probably going to touch on a, a, in a little bit here is Titanfall versus Apex Legends yeah right? trying to find your audience trying to find something that's sustainable while also executing on on you know the best of what you can do um, and of course the fact that we like niche things doesn't help that you're like if they're making a niche thing how do you combine the the best of both worlds I think and like. Um, Yoko Taro and Platinum figured that out. It was like, That's hey, do I you was want... about to say. I was about to say. <laughs> do you want a, a niche action game about existentialism and the meaning of life? I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. What if the robots have fucking giant asses and they're in like BDSM gear and they got blindfolds on and then oh, are they gonna kiss? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 ex <laughs> like I was just about to say. Like if you do. If you take on the role of like, okay, what property that people already care about slash what world that has an appeal that we can step in and do the combat on, be that near, be that, uh, 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 you know, a rising type situation or anything like that. That's probably the best bet for it. Um, when it doesn't go sour, a Psy Games crossover to make a Grand Blue f game, mm -hmm. you know, um, and doing essentially what um, Arxis does. In an it's, ideal world, Arxis would be the equivalent where they make their Guilty Gear, they make their Blaze Blue, and then they also do these, they do Dragon Ball for, for yeah. you know, um, whatever, Bandai and whatever Guns for Hire things, they they do a really good job having that, that flavor. Hey, is that Platinum game with Psy Games that's, that got turned a, a, out of, like, Relink? That used to be platinum, but it's not platinum anymore. That's coming out, right? That is coming out. They showed a big trailer for it off not too long ago, so it is still happening. Um, I think with the yeah, with the logo stripped and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, that's it, gonna be fucking weird to play. You, man. you look at the you look at the combat in that, and you're like, damn, that looks and seems to be the platinum style of thing. Um, yeah, I wonder if they I, built it on like the bones, or if mm. they just threw everything out. There's also a weird uh, thing in this, like, when you're trying to look, look back on the, the timeline of the company and figure it out. There's a weird thing where you have, like, a Babylon's Fall situation where um, I was mistaken in how that game, you know, came about and, and, and switched up over the years and, and eventually flopped. But um, when you have something like a scale bound, which never existed, you just have the hypothetical what it could so have been in your brain and you're like but what if it what if it was going to be bad what if it was not going to be good you know well, what like, if here's what if the thing you saw in the trailer versus what ended up coming out was a huge discrepancy and you know what i mean and there's just I a have massive a financial loss right? with that specifically because it's like a lot I, I this is assumption so it's grain of salt everyone mm -hmm. it feels like all the shit from Scalebound, like all the fight with your dragon shit, got ported directly into Bayo 3 with mm -hmm. fight with your, your demon out. And it's like, I didn't particularly like Bayo 3 at the end of it. And that was with a character that I liked. So like maybe mm, ooh what mm -hmm. the f ooh maybe well, like Scalebound was is like a coin flip for me it, it, about you, whether or not it could have been good or not. We'll never know, right? We'll never know. And like it it because it's this mystery point, you can go, oh man, that could have been, or you could you know you could always reference it as like yeah that was the financial point where they just lost so much on the deal, but it would have you know the alternate you know? timeline temptation if you want to headcanon it is is is. You, know, in, um, you can pretend that it would have been something, but like it might not have been, you know. And it's like, okay, so it got it got can it got canceled, and Mike and you're like, well, maybe maybe Microsoft was, maybe whoever canceled Scalebound at Microsoft knew what they were doing, 
And then this week, part of the news is that we get a little peek at what the first party thinks of certain games and what they're worth. And you see Microsoft's internal documentation refer to Baldur's Gate 3 as a second-run Stadia RPG yeah. and low-balling it. Oh, yeah, $5 million to get that on Game Pass forever. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man. The, 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 uh, the <laughs> level of off-the-mark behind the scenes continues to be fucking laughable and un incredible uh yeah that, there's a whole bit there it um, was wild watching um larian and microsoft's like pr people try and salvage what a mean statement that was you oh, saw like the, I, I didn't see the, the larian up. the larian guy was like listen nobody knew this game was going to be a huge success we all all of us internally didn't know it was going to be that big because they're currently in the process of porting the fucking game to the Xbox and then everybody wants to be nice and do business. But it's like, it's so, there's so much shade there. It's so mean. <laughs> Again, a shitty internal email and or document not meant for the public eye. And now you've got to walk back the truth of how you feel. You know? mm. Um... Anyway, uh, we, we'll we'll see all of these questions and more to be answered in the future. As you know, we'll see whatever gets announced. Um, if he's not starting something new, then he'll get picked up elsewhere. And uh, I mean, <sighs> the like stuff like Astral Chain comes out, and you're like, that's that's cool, and you like to see. I really like Astral Chain. That's my favorite platinum game of the past couple of years. But but does that have the power to like, you know what I mean, to carry? No, 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 no one cares. No, no that's it. I that's care. It. You care. No one else. And 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 I mean, it, it probably would have had a a bigger impact if it, you know, perhaps like was uh, on every platform, for example. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. But it would only help so much. I think there's just a limited appeal, unfortunately, right? So, dude, I would kill for Astral Chain on any other platform. Like that game running at a a, a better resolution, a better frame rate. Oh, oh, I'd be good. Yeah, I think a potential outcome, you know, that obviously has been resisted for a long time too, depending on how things go. Is like they they could go for if they take another couple hot ones, um, and. Uh, to no success, to no avail, the mm -hmm. the buyout, right? The buyout by a Nintendo or the buyout by a Squeenix type of thing. The um, Nintendo one seems to make the most sense, honestly. Yeah, just this world of acquisitions that we are entering, right? Where, where fucking <laughs> Microsoft is like, maybe we can buy Nintendo. And like, you know, the, the, just fish is eating fishes, I yeah, think. Did we is, talk is about it... that last week? Was that because I think that was part of the Microsoft internal documentation that was leaked yeah, in the past I, week? I feel like we might have touched on it. But yeah. But like, like the, I feel Microsoft like the Japanese government would not allow Microsoft <laughs> to buy. No, like, seriously. I feel like there would be like a stated national interest. In not allowing an American company to own Nintendo. Like, I, I cannot but, possibly ever see that happening ever. And also, we have the story from a couple of years ago where Microsoft floated it before and they got laughed out of Nintendo's office. There, there, there will be a, 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 a monument erected of Yamauchi telling Balmer to lick his balls. <laughs> and put that in the town square right next to Hachiko in solid gold. Like Nintendo's 134 years old today. Like that's an old company and people are apparently very happy to work there. Like I can't I could never see it. Yeah. I could never see but it. But I also I said this before too. I also think there's that statement where uh Nintendo was like we have the money to we have the the money to to run to operate at a loss for 42 years or some yeah. crazy thing like that. And it's like back then maybe now there's no fucking way right there's mm -hmm. no way and there i i really see them being like the transition into being a sega style software only company is not that far away but they still mm. continue to um make uh, the most i think the comparison of the internal microsoft they charts, make the most profit they make out the of most all profit based on their expenditures right because they make uh, they make more profit per by percent than microsoft and sony combined because they're making hardware at a loss Right? Yeah. And it's like, good for Nintendo. Make make the money. 
that light's getting in my face. Um, so yeah, it's 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 curious to see uh, 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 how they're gonna go with this, and you know, if the switch to is like like halfway towards a, a Steam Deck or even like the Asus ROG or whatever. You know what I mean? Like if it's just like not even approaching that I would level. kill for a Switch 2 that's just backwards compatible. That's all I want. Oh, I, I imagine that's definitely going to be want. the case. That'd be crazy if it weren't. There's a bunch like, of Switch games that just I would like to have yeah. them run on a, on a new hardware, please. No, I, I definitely imagine. I mean, um, the... The, the libraries everyone has built on their games, uh, on their consoles now, has, like, expanded to this insane amount. You know, the idea of, like, it was always painful to drop it off in previous generations. Dropping it off mm -hmm. now is, like, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And so for, it's, it's, it's insane to think of just, like, no, fuck you. Digital library gone. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh... That is that is some wild shit, and yeah, I guess the the Microsoft stuff did pop up, um, oh my God. after last week, but uh, <laughs> Kamiya is is an unhinged man. I'm looking at his Twitter account; it's the funniest thing in the world. The Platinum Games announcement that he's leaving, followed by a couple of statements, and then. A photo of his torn underwear. As I he's just noticed on the my pants are torn to a degree I've never seen before. And then a photo of some alcohol going, cheers! <laughs> rip, like <laughs> critical damage, catastrophic underwear rip. Like, like the crotch is fully ripped out. Dick and balls are hitting the pants, like right through. There is no. There is no protection. The one job the underwear is supposed to do is no longer possible. <laughs> what does he mean by this? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to hire? Anyone want to hire this guy? <laughs> Put that, attach that tweet to the resume. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Unhinged is, is the right word. Um, anyways. Uh, all that and more in a minute. That's um, a man starting his own company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's mm -hmm. Ener a not the energy. Guy who's gonna go start interviewing. No fucks given energy. 